Hi, I'm Steph. And I'm Jonathan. Coming up is a Xero demonstration which will give you an overview of Xero and highlight some of the many benefits of cloud accounting. Here at NR Barton, we are Platinum Xero partners offering market leading cloud accountancy advice. I will now pass you over to Becca from Xero. Hi, I'm Becca from the Xero education team. Welcome to this short demo of Xero. We're going to start by looking at the Xero dashboard. The dashboard is the mission control for your business, the one-stop shop that gives you all the real-time information that you need. You can come here and get a really clear, up-to-date picture of exactly how your business is performing. But let's just take a quick tour and pick out a few key tiles. First up, the banking tile. This is the tile your eye is immediately drawn to when you open your dashboard. We just have one bank account today, but what this tile gives you is complete visibility for each of your bank accounts. You can see how much money you have in your bank accounts and the balance in Xero. Xero has a direct relationship with most of the main UK banks, and if you bank with one of these providers, you can set up what's called a direct bank feed. A direct feed will pull through the statement data from your bank account and bring it directly and seamlessly into Xero every 24 hours. This is done without you having to manually intervene. It's an automated process that's going to give you a continuous, automated flow of real-life banking data into your accounts. Also, using the dynamic graph, you can see the balances at previous dates. Having all of this in one place gives you better information, which ultimately means better decision-making. We'll come back to the bank tile in a moment and take a look at reconciling the transactions. But before we do that, I want to take you on a tour of some of the other features on the dashboard. Next, we have the total cash in and out tile, which is fairly self-explanatory. It's a great bar chart showing the cash coming in and out of the business. This is a great example of just how intuitive and easy to use Xero is. You can click into a balance and drill down straight to the data behind it. You don't have to go away and run a separate report to see what these are made up of. It's just one click away. In the top right hand corner, you can see we have a tile called the Accounts Watch List. This is the tile where you can pin the accounts you want to keep an eye on. Maybe sales, for example. Perhaps you want to know exactly how much you've sold so far this month. Or, what income has come into your business. You might want to pin your headline expense accounts, the areas of your business where you spend a lot of money. They're important for keeping a tight control on the cash flow. You can also see these numbers are hyperlinks. If you click onto them, you can drill down into each account at the click of a button. You can see here we have all the sales transactions for this month. Over here on the right hand side we have two more tiles that I'd really like to bring to your attention. You'll notice in Xero we try and use plain English wherever we can. So here you can see we have invoices owed to you and bills you need to pay, rather than complex accounting terminology. This is to help make Xero really easy and accessible for anyone to use. You can see how easy it is to keep an eye on those overdue bills and invoices with the examples we have here. So that's the dashboard and you can see this will really give you that real-time overview and help you stay in control of running your business. So earlier I mentioned that we'd come back to the banking tile. Now we're going to take a closer look into bank reconciliation. I know this is something that can be a bit of a headache when running a business and can seem a little scary the first time you do it. So we're going to jump straight into the bank rec. You can see there is a big blue button with Reconcile Two Items. We're going to click this and it will take us straight to the bank reconciliation. This is the bank rec screen. When we were building it, we had the idea of the game of Snap in the back of our minds. So the idea, much like Snap, is to match together the bank statement line to the transactions in Xero. The bank statement lines are actually bank transactions, so this is real life, what actually happened in the bank account. On the right, we're trying to find a match to the transaction in our accounts. But Xero helps you to reduce some of the manual legwork by using automation. The first trick is auto-matching. We have received some money from Ridgeway University for a sales invoice. Xero takes this data and looks to find a match in the sales invoices that are awaiting payment. It then looks at the amount, dates and pay you reference to make the most suitable match. In this case, it's been successful. So this has happened through automation. The automation has identified the match and is suggesting that we go ahead and match the income to the sales invoice. 
So now all that's left to do is click OK and confirm that we want to reconcile the statement line to the transaction in zero. The second feature that I want to show you that makes the bank reconciliation easier and more efficient is a feature in zero called Bank Rules. Bank Rules are a really useful tool for regular recurring income and expense transactions. You can see here we have a transaction for 7-Eleven. So, recently, I went down to the local corner shop and spent £15.50. If we go to the side, you can see that this section has already been completed. This is because we have a bank rule set up. You can set up bank rules for loads of different types of transactions. Take, for example, a plumber. They will fill up with fuel and buy parts from the wholesaler. These will be fairly repetitive transactions. So what you're able to do is set up a bank rule that will take the repetitive transactions and it will look for certain criteria. We have set up a rule for our corner shop as we pop in once or twice a week and buy sundry expenses. This could be washing up liquid or tea bags for the office. We're going to use a bank rule to capture the transaction so every time that we go to 7-Eleven, we will tell Xero how we want it to deal with the transaction in our accounts. We need to enter the description that we want, the account code we need it to go to, and, if any, the VAT rate. You can set up many different bank rules, and there are three types spend money, receive money, and transfer rules. The wonderful thing about bank rules is once you've set them up, all you need to do to confirm the rule is correct is click the OK button and Xero will do the rest for you. It's going to create the account transaction and reconcile that statement line. Using bank rules is a great way to automate the bank reconciliation. So the next feature we're going to look at in Xero is the sales invoicing. We're going to go from setting up the quote all the way through to the most important part, receiving the payment. First of all, you need to go to Business, then select Sales Overview. You can probably guess what this is showing, but it's a great little overview of all the different sales activities in the business. So all the quotes I've sent to my customers, all the quotes that need invoicing, and finally, any outstanding invoices. You'll see it looks like I have a bit of work to do as I currently have 10 overdue invoices. Xero highlights this, so I probably want to give those invoices a chase. For invoices in Xero, we have a great automated invoice reminder feature where you can set up emails to be sent out. We won't be going into too much detail about that today, but if as a business you're struggling with overdue invoices, Xero has some great features to help you keep on top of them. What we are going to do is click into an accepted quote to use as an example. In true Blue Peter fashion, here's one I made earlier. This is a quote for one of my customers. My customer has accepted the quote and it's gone into the accepted tab. I can click into it and check the quote over. So when I'm ready, I can use this quote to create the sales invoice by clicking the big green Create Invoice button. Check the marked as invoice and click Create. We have a couple of shortcuts for data entry of zero, plus 30 for 30 days, plus one W for one week, or plus one month. Once you're happy, click Approve, and we're going to send this invoice out via email. We are ready to provide the service We've made the invoice and now we're going to email it out. You can see we have an email template that's been populated by Xero. This happens automatically. I can edit it before I send it out at an individual level if I need to. Also, I don't need to export the invoice out to attach it to the email, as I can send this all out from within Xero. We'll go ahead and click Send. I can show the emphasis on real time. As you can see, by the time I've arrived at my inbox, the invoice is already there. All the information for the invoice is on the email, so the customer can scan this over, and once they're ready, click the link to view the invoice. This is the online version of the invoice for Xero. This is a real-time document, so any changes made will be automatically updated. This gives you the real-time aspect. One of the reasons I wanted to show you this screen was the lovely big green Pay Now button at the top. What we've done here is we've linked something called a payment service to our invoice in our accounting software. Some of you may have used payment services before, like PayPal and WorldPay. Those are just some. There are many more out there. Payment services are all about helping you guys get paid faster. For me, one of the main reasons that they are so powerful and effective is because they make it more convenient for your customers to go ahead and pay your invoices. The same goes for our Pay Now button. If this is linked to the payment services, it's so easy and convenient for the customer to go in and set up the payment straight away. They can do this using debit card, credit card, or in this case, PayPal. So just one click and the customer is taken into a checkout 
where they can go ahead and pay our invoice. So this is a really good example of how cloud accounting can help you get paid faster and keep on top of your cash flow. One final thing that I just wanted to mention in regards to invoicing. There's one great little feature in Xero that really helps you to scale up your invoicing if you have a large number of customers. It's something called the contact group. This is a great way of invoicing a group of customers that regularly buy particular goods or services. Then a contact group is a way that you can get this done quickly and efficiently by creating a single invoice in Xero and then apply that invoice to all your different customers in that group. You can add as many different customers into that group as you want, so you could feasibly create a single invoice that went out to 250 customers. So that's a really, really powerful tool for invoicing a large number of customers in bulk. Just before we round up, I'm going to take a quick look at reports and then head into the mobile app. To get to reports, we need to go to accounting and then click reports. This will take us to the reports homepage. Reporting is hugely relevant to all of us out there. We can get better information and more visibility with what's happening in our business. We only have a short amount of time today, so I'm just going to show you on one report how you can customize them, make them more flexible, and that you can make the report satisfy your needs. We're going to click into the new profit and loss as an example. Hopefully, this is something that you guys are familiar with seeing at year end or half year. To keep an eye on your PL, make sure your figures seem correct, and ultimately, what we're working towards that profit margin. So here we have the PL, and if we go into report settings, I can show you the simple ways we can customize the reports. We can change the date range, you can choose any from this list, or even select custom and amend these dates. You can also try adding tracking categories using this drop down. If you haven't heard of a tracking category before, they're a great way of keeping on top of different expenditure or different activity in different areas of your business. It might mean if you have five or six different offices across one particular region, you can set up each one of those offices with their own category so that you know you can see how each particular office is performing. All of that visibility can be brought to the surface. In the profit and loss itself, you can see that we've added a budget and a variance column. And if we scroll down, you can see that I've grouped together my travel costs. I did this all using the edit layout button at the bottom. Now I'm going to just save this report as a custom so I can rerun this whenever I need to. If we look back at the P&L, we can see I've significantly overspent on repairs and maintenance. If we click on the blue number, it will take us to the transactions that make up this amount. And we can see there have been two charges. One is for a replacement, so this is why I've gone over budget. But if there was something on here that wasn't right, just one click and I could go in and amend the transaction. You can see here we've gone from a real headline report, the profit and loss report, all the way to the source transaction itself in just a few clicks. Also, if you check at the top of the invoice, you can see there's a little paper icon with the corner folded. This signifies in Xero that a document or file is attached to the transaction. And you can see here we have the bill. If we were to click on it, it would take us to an actual image of the bill. So, you can see that we can keep the file on the invoice and add any other information and it will all be stored in one place. But just remember when you see the file icon, that's where you can attach a file. So, I hope that's given you a really nice little overview of the reporting function in Xero. Just to round off, we're going to take a closer look at the mobile app. We know how important it is to have your business data at your fingertips whilst you're on the move. You can see my phone here and that I'm using the app for iOS, but this is available for Android too. First of all, we're going to log in using our fingerprint. This is really useful if you're sharing your phone or tablet. So here is the mobile app. This gives you a really nice little overview of what's going on and the headline information. So if you're using bank feeds, you can log in and all the bank will be up to date with all your transactions as at midnight the night before. So this gives you rich information and you can go in and get your bank up to date. The functionality that I showed you earlier with auto match and bank rules still works via the app. The app is really useful for keeping on top of your sales. So you can jump into this and keep a really close eye on any invoices you need to chase. The app is also really useful for entering bills if you have a spare five minutes. You can enter receipts and bills on the go. You can attach a file and even use the camera on your smartphone to take a picture of the receipt and attach it. Next, we have the contact information that effectively syncs all of your customer and supplier information into the mobile app. 
and you can use that data to directly call from the app. And finally, we have the profit for this month. This feature means you can keep an eye on your transactions and how it's affecting your profit. So that brings our demo to a close. I hope that gives you a great overview of some of the many advantages of the cloud and Xero. Thank you, Becca, and thank you for watching our Xero demonstration video. We hope you found it helpful. For more information, please visit our website at www.nrbarton.co.uk.